Greetings unsettled souls and welcome to The Correct Views. Um, I want to start off real quick by something that has been making me insane for years. Many of you may know uh, that I was I uh, was married, I technically still am married. Uh, my wife and I are very, very good friends. We get along well. The girl that I'm with now gets along well with uh, my, my wife. And uh, ultimately, you know, uh, you know which direction it's going. Unfortunately, uh, I hate it as much as anyone else does, but it is the D word. In any event, look, we were married on Halloween. That's the point of my story. Why did we get married on Halloween? Because we're blood-drinking Satanists. Ooh, uh, no. Actually, I'm a Christian, and so is she. We got married on Halloween because my dad kicked ass and took us walking up and down the streets. Uh, Halloween, trick-or-treating. Uh, he had degenerative disc disease. Uh, he had non-mental uh, cerebral palsy in his leg. Uh, and, and let's face it, it, he was pretty much wrapped up and he would walk forever back and forth. It was just a fun time. Dressing up and makeup and all of it. See my pumpkin? Uh, you saw Christelle's pumpkin last time. Um, Good look. I'm talking about two articles here. Um, one of them is uh, from the AEP, uh, Satanic Halloween Rituals Alarm the Polish Catholic Church. And uh, Alex Jones also did a, a thing on the origins, uh, the occultic origins of Halloween. <sighs> okay, look. I get it. Horrible things happened on Halloween. I get it. I completely get it. Things of an unholy nature that I would never condone happened on Halloween. Okay, I concede. Now let me ask you something. How many of you Christians, and I'm one of you, how many, I'm not including myself in this, how many of you chastise to no end people who get Christmas presents on Christmas? Who don't like uh, religion and are but pretty much uh, anti-Christian, against God, or at least an atheist. Are they a Christian because they got a gift and bought a gift for Christmas? Or does being a Christian mean that you have to believe in the birth, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ for your sins? Okay. Does carving a pumpkin on a satanic holiday mean that you have given your life to the Oh, but that's different. How is it different? I carve pumpkins. You know why? Because I like them. I like monster movies. I'm not satanic. I don't want anybody hurt. And you people are going overboard. There's something wrong with you people. So, happy freaking Halloween. Goodness, man. I'll do some real news here. Um, Infowars.com, American undergraduates are recruited for population agenda control as UN raises the stakes. This is a travesty, and I will tell you why. Um, uh, clearly, we're teaching our children at younger and younger ages that there are too many people in the world. I'll tell you something. And I put this in my movie, uh, Bilderberg, Why It Mattered to Me. I, it's a DVD. It's on sale for $10. And um, it's, it's, it's simple mathematical fact. I'm reading this at the same time I'm talking. I used to be able to put graphics and things up when I was speaking. And I had a uh, person staying with me that deleted a number of my videos. Do me a favor right now. Pause this video. Pause and then go um, down to the video that says um, request for help. In two minutes, I, you, can tell, you can help me get my graphics back up. Um, anyway, we're teaching our children at a younger and younger and younger age that there are too many people in the world. And this is a bold-faced lie. Um, as I pointed out in the movie, the entire world's population given the exact same amount of space that the average person in New York City gets. All the people
people in the world can fit comfortably into the state of Texas. Did you hear that? There are not too many people in the world. There are not too many people using up too many resources. Why don't you, uh, instead of trying to make uh, food and agriculture such a uh, profit margin here, if you would allow the farmers that you pay not to farm, to farm, that would go a long way with food, wouldn't it? If uh, food that was not consumed in restaurants was given to food banks instead of uh, thrown away, that would do a lot, wouldn't it? If there were not so many rules and regulations on making uh, energy cleaner, there would not be so many gasoline running cars. And gasoline and man-made global warming is not, uh, man using gasoline and oil is not warming the planet. That is a lie. But we're teaching our children these things. And neo-eugenicists, that means a uh, person that believes we should all die, of the, you know, the, new, the new breed of people that want us dead. Neo-eugenicist John Sager to undergraduates, quote, you're the ones who are going to be able to move this forward and complete what I see as one of the great social movements of our time. I'm going to read some of this. In a recent uh, benign report released last week by the United Nations Population Fund, the projection for global population growth in 2050 has been raised with an additional 117 million on top of the earlier projection of 8 billion people. As the UN keeps up the pressure, an effort is underway to flood universities and colleges throughout the United States with population control propaganda. What that is saying is that they are teaching our college students and um, our, even our children, in, in some instances in grade school, that there are too many people and that we need to be euthanized. And soon, soon you're raised this way. So let's face it, you and I, I mean, I had, I had so, many, so many of you, and thank you, so many of you that came out of the woodwork to donate money to help my dad when he had cancer. Unfortunately, he lost that battle, but you guys were all there. So many of you. Um, well, let's move a generation ahead. A generation that has been taught, why donate money to help save this man? He's in his late 60s. He's got degenerative disc disease, so he's not really making a lot of money anymore. He used to when he was a nurse, but he's not worth it anymore. We're not going to donate. Don't you people see that we are only one generation away from this happening? And the more of this malarkey that gets put into our heads, that somebody might be speaking into a camera 40 years from now, talking about how wonderful it is that a grandmother died. That's where these things lead. I'm not this major anti-abortion person. I'm someone who believes that's uh, between the person and God. Um, legally, uh, if I had to get in it, I would say it's a state issue. But I'm speaking beyond abortion, regardless of which side of that you're on. Right? That, 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 that's a debate that never ends, so that's why I don't talk about it here. That or gayness, I try to avoid either one, because there's no end to it. But, I mean, there's an end to this, and that end is you and I. This eugenics movement, this idea that man is warming the planet and using too many resources, which you can look online, is absolutely false. Um, if we keep going down this road, we're going to have some very scary people with some very scary thoughts in the majority. Mark my words, this is a road to doom. Please listen to me. Um, this show is brought to you by the Arcadia Grill. I want to thank them for uh, their support. Um, delicious food. It's on Court Avenue in downtown Canton. If you have never been to the Arcadia Grill, First Friday's coming up on us really fast. Do me a favor, go down to the Arcadia Grill there and enjoy delicious food, awesome drink specials, and service, bam, there in a second. Thank you, Arcadia Grill. They may not always agree with the views of yours truly, but they are definitely on the side of free speech. World Bank Illuminary breeds smaller people to increase metabolic efficiency. Um, another InfoWars article. I picked two today since I started off the show critiquing his occult Halloween BS. Hey, I agree with Alex Jones 98.9% of the time. 
Um, in an article entitled The Population's Problem, written two days ago by Herman DeLay, a former World Bank luminary and current professor at the University of Maryland, suggests that designing smaller human beings to counter global population growth Breeding smaller human beings, he asserts, could be the simplest way of increasing metabolic efficiency measured as the number of people maintained by a given resource throughout. You know, this is a whole lot better than the, the, the standard eugenics that I just talked about. But let me, let me address something here. Breeding people like dogs to make them smaller could be a moral issue. Could not be a moral issue. It's a, you know... Or whatever. What if people are made to breathe a certain way? Or what if it's easier to genetically modify them so that they don't grow as big? That is my fear here. Um, I'm going to be a perv for a minute. If you don't like blue, hu blue humor, now skip ahead like a minute. Okay, you had your warning. I have a thing for little people, not kids. The first person that says that will get blocked, and no one's ever been blocked from my page. Don't even go there. I like little tiny girls. Love it, love it, love it. My girlfriend is little. Um, my ex who I just told you about was little. I've only dated like two normal sized girls in my whole life. So from a blue humor, typical male point of view, okay, make them smaller. All right, fine. Welcome back, blue humor people. And no, you know what? It's like gallows humor. I, I'm a faithful person. I do not, never cheated on anyone in my life. It, that's a joke. Um, I'm going to get back to being serious. People, look. Listen to this malarkey here. Human organisms might be genetically redesigned to require less food, air, and water. Indeed, smaller people would be the simplest way of increasing metabolic efficiency measured as the number of people maintained by a given resource throughout. Want some more horror? I've got some. Happy Halloween. To my knowledge, no one has yet suggested breeding smaller people as a way to avoid limiting births, but that probably just reflects my ignorance. We have, however, been busy breeding and genetically engineering larger and faster growing plants and livestock. Moo! That's all you are, you're a cow! So far, the latter uh, dissipative structures have been complementary to, with populations of human bodies, but in a finite and small world, the relationship will soon become competitive. This is, this is ridiculous. It is globalism that is leading the problem. The only people that had any trouble with uh, uh, this population issue has been the most repressive, most poorly run governments. Uh, I agree with Sam Kinison here. Africans' problem is take people where the food is. Some places where these people are living are simply not a good place to live. And they have a population problem due to bad decision making. And I don't mean to be insensitive to people that are in Africa, but we need to be moving them out of that area. Let's face it. I've been there for five and two thousand years. Okay, good. Two thousand years ago, when your ancestors were there, there might have been trees and pastures and grass and water. None of that is there now, so you should move. You're in a desert. Um, the only desert we've ever irrigated that I know of with much success is in Nevada, and they had they could have this far from you know. Like, let, God forbid, let a major disaster happen, and they'd be in deep trouble. Um, the, way, the way we, like I said, buy, sell food, the way we make medicine at an un astronomical cost, that is what is wrong with how many people there are. It's not the number of people, man. Listen to me. That's not what it is at all. What it is, is bad management of people. And I don't mean governments coming down. I mean people realizing that smaller communities are not such a bad way to go. And if you are in a big city, and people know me, I want to, when I get older, I want to retire to New York City. You, somebody listening to this finds me a job in New York City, and bam, I'll go right away. I hate Ohio. But, you know, if you're going to live in a big city, that is fine as well. But, if you're going to live in, a, in the middle of nowhere, starving to death, that is a decision issue um, to some degree. Um, 
that is not so much a decision based on there being too many people. They're just badly placed and um, their leaders um, very badly managed governments. Um, they're too busy pocketing the money for their palaces and their warlords in Africa to take care of the issue of locating these people to parts of Africa where they could live and building communities where they could live. The problem is bad leadership. The problem is not too many people. Last thing I want to get to, and this just infuriates me, busted! Cops in this kid magnet U.S. city are the worst speeders in town. AOL news. I hate AOL, but I digress. The investigative news team at WKMG TV in Orlando received tips that there were habitual speeders in the area. Sometimes going in excess of 100 miles an hour, apparently getting off scot-free. Turns out that the reason for this is that they weren't being ticketed or prosecuted. They were off-duty police. In Canton, Ohio, you can see these buzzards, uh, they put the lights on to go through a red light and then as soon as they get through it, they shut them off. And there's, there's no emergency, that was my point. And yet, they nail you for doing 45 and a 35. And there's two ways that I suggest fighting back with this. First of all, cell phone brigade, move! Take your cell phones if you live in an intersection. On your next day off, just look out the window because we're in Ohio. It's too cold to go outside now, isn't it? Um, take your phone and film them doing it. And then upload that to your account. If you're worried that this is going to get you in trouble, no matter where you live, if you do this and you're afraid that it's going to get you in trouble, I'll tell you what. You send me the video of them doing it and I'll post it on my channel. The other way to fight back is when you get a ticket, don't pay it. Get 20,000 people in one state to do that and watch what happens. Shut it down, my friends. You are listening to the correct views. Thank you for doing so. Good night. God bless.